Hi, I'm Mark and this is Foothill Paint Fabrication. Today we're going to be spraying some polyester primer. We'll be testing out that new gun I bought from Amazon, see how well it works. Uh, we're going to be spraying the bed. I got the running boards ready, uh, the tailgate's uh, not quite ready, so we're going to be doing some work on that, get it prepped so I can spray everything at once. So uh, let's just jump right into it, get this tailgate knocked out, and we start spraying some primer. Okay, as you can see, I already got started on a lot of the scratches, uh, dings, and everything else that are in this tailgate. Um, these tailgates, they're one-sided on probably two-thirds of it, so any dent, you got to make sure you get it nice and flat or it'll show on both sides. So I was able to knock them out. Luckily, the dents weren't up by the letters. You get dents in there, it's a nightmare. So uh, just a lot of chips and other problems, and uh, I don't know if you can see here, but the last paint job, they just kind of slathered paint over, you know, stuff. So we're going to get after this thing with some heavy, pretty heavy sandpaper to try to get a lot of that out. I can't paint over that. It's, I, I don't think I could bring myself to do it. So um, we're going to get some sanding done with the DA, get all this glazing putty uh, sanded smooth, and then make sure we got everything else and hit it with some heavy sandpaper to try to sand some of these other bad areas out, and it'll be ready for prime. Okay, the good thing about the, working on these flat tailgates is you can, I can use a DA with some 80 grit to hit all these spots and uh, it goes pretty quick. So we're going to run over, flatten all these out real quick, flip it over, get the other side, and then uh, see what else we can do about all this kind of janky work that was done previously. And then uh, try to smooth it out enough so when we put some primer on it, we're not asking a lot of the primer to fix. We're just trying to get the primer to take some of the scratches out that we put in with the, the heavier grit sandpaper. So uh, let me, let me jump, at, jump on this real quick and then um, we'll see how fast we can knock this out. Okay, that took uh, eight minutes total. So using the 80 grit on the DA and then 80 grit on that little tiny wood block allows me to just knock it down really fast and then we'll hit it with the finer sandpaper. Now these big blobs sticking out inside this, um, I'm gonna hit that with some pretty aggressive sandpaper, probably at an 80 grit, because this is just, uh, the body line's all goofed up here and I don't even know what these blobs are they painted over. So I'm a little leery of that. Um, so I'm going to try to straighten up this line with that little block and try to smooth this out. Now this is the inside of the bed, but still it's clearly visible and uh, 
I just can't leave it. Uh, you know, no matter how much I'd like to, I'm not supposed to be spending a tremendous amount of time on this work, but uh, it's just something the way I am. I can't just uh, blow and go and, and leave it looking like that. And we have some other small uh, chips and stuff that I'll probably hit again with some glazing putty. The more I sand on it, the more they show up. So let me get these real quick here and then we'll flip it over and see what the other side looks like. Luckily, the outside of it is a lot better shape than the inside, obviously, uh, since it is a truck. Um, so I'll get these real quick and then we'll see where we're at. Maybe we can start to spray some primer. So just a little bit of work with a little piece of uh, flat piece of wood and some 80 grit. Um, I was able to clean this line up really nice. Uh, the corners are going to take a little bit of hand work. I'll just do that off camera. It's a lot of tedious work to get this radius cleaned up. Inside the letters, I'm not really going to spend a tremendous amount of time in there. I say that right now, but I'll probably end up doing it. But these need to be flattened out a little bit. They've got some blobs in it here and there. So I'll get in there and do those as well. And this is the kind of crap that uh, you tend to skip over because it's so hard to do. But if you just take one letter at a time, take a break, and keep working on it, you'll have it look good. Ideally, probably should have had this tailgate sandblasted, but uh, it's just that's not this paint job. So I have to just keep reminding myself. So what I'm going to do is I'll sand this all up off camera. We'll flip it over and work on the other side. Luckily, it looks pretty good. Got the two little dents we took out right here. And other than that, the letters all look really nice. Uh, this side was done well. Uh, there's a few spots where uh, it wasn't sanded very well between the last paint job or the paint job before that. So I'm gonna take it down a little deeper. Other than that, uh, we'll be have this thing ready to go here shortly when we start spraying some primer. Okay, I got a solid four hours into this thing and a worn out thumb from getting down and around all these little letters on both sides. But it's just what you need to do on these things to make sure they're well sanded. I had to, uh, you know, fix some of the sins of the other paint jobs that are in front of me. All I have left is a couple little chips I missed. I got a little 80. I think I got some 120 on here. So we're going to sand those real quick and then uh, get this thing cleaned up and we're ready to start spraying some primer. So it doesn't take long, you know, when you're, uh, when you're using this stuff. But you just got to stay with it. You know, these tailgates will eat up a day or two. Or I did one, I did one on a Ford F100, and I gave up on it probably six or eight times. I mean, it was stretched out. It was like they were driving around with bowling balls in the bed of the truck for 10 years. The whole panel was pushed out, and of course it had the nice Ford uh, emblem on it, so it wasn't like you could just section it out and weld a new piece in. So I, I, I worked on that thing, and I gave up on it, and I'd work on it, and then I'd give up on it. And uh, eventually I got it back into a decent shape, but it took a lot of hammering and a lot of shrinking of the steel to get to that point. But just persistence, I, I would give up on it and then go work on something else. Um, because I was so frustrated with it and sick of it um, and then I'd kind of get rejuvenated because I hadn't had a look at it for you know a few days or a week or whatever and then I went ahead and uh, got back on it and uh, and that's the way to do it really if you start getting frustrated and you start just saying oh that's good enough I'm, and leave it um, you're, you're not gonna like it later on so you're better just to walk away take a break um, kind of re recharge your batteries on whatever you're working on and then come back to it and you'll 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 get it right it just takes time and then you know but if you're sick of working on it and you're frustrated you just got to step back um, that's what works for me all right so those are all done I think we might have one or two here little ones 
but I've got the majority of them around the inside of these letters. It's not that nice, but uh, I'm not going to try to fix that. Without sandblasting, I don't think I can get those to look as nice as they should. So we're just going to hit it like it is. And uh, if anything looks horrible when we got it in prime, then we can go ahead and hit it with some more glazing. It's not the end of the world. But I like to get it all done in advance. That way there's less to do in prime, maybe having to prime again, which is what I'm trying to avoid here. So let's get this cleaned up. I'll hit those little spots I just did with some 320 to smooth those out a little bit while Jake lays down over there and watches me. And, uh, and then we'll mix up some primer and get these things sprayed. Okay, we'll be spraying uh, polyprime again. It's a polyester primer, it takes hardener. It's 80, 79 degrees in the shop right now. So uh, we're gonna mix it, I'll mix about a quart. Uh, we got quite a bit to spray, two sides of each side of the panel of the bed, or all three sides are gonna take a double coat. And then um, the running boards and the tailgate. So I'm gonna mix about a quart which is to harden it, it's about a fourth of this bottle. So it takes about uh, half an ounce per quart. If it's colder, you want to put a little bit more in. If it's hot, you can put, you know, get by with a little bit less, but you want to make sure you use the right amount to make sure this stuff uh, cures properly. So I got it stirred up pretty good. We're going to be trying out that new gun I just uh, did a little quick review on. Uh, this is 35, 36 bucks off Amazon. Came with a 1.4, 1.7, and a 2.0 uh, millimeter orifice tips. So I got the 1.7 in there. We're gonna test it out, see how it works. Now they did leak a little bit right here with just lacquer thinner in them, but I don't think they're gonna leak with the uh, polyprime in it. This stuff's pretty thick. So we're gonna see how it sprays. Uh, usually spray it with a 1.4. Uh, which is, you know, the stuff's a little thick for a 1.4, but I'm going to, uh, we're going to kick it up here a little bit and see what happens. All right, so we're just going to pour some off, and just like body filler and everything else, the stir stick that you mix with cannot be, go into catalyzed material. So I've got an old one I've already mixed with. So I'm going to guesstimate a quart here. Now, just like before, when we did the polyester primer, you want to make sure you get it this mixed in really well. Kind of like doing epoxy, where you want to make sure you scrape the sides and, uh, you know, give it a really good mix. And then I like to let it sit a little bit and then stir it up again. As you can imagine, this stuff's thick, so it doesn't want, you know, so you got to kind of scrape the sides and make sure everything's mixed well. And this drips out pretty easy because I've cut the end off here. If it's a small hole, some of these squeeze bottles you squeeze so hard it'll shoot the tip out and dump the whole bottle in at once. So you got to be careful. So I always cut the hole a little bit bigger, uh, especially because I'm not counting drops. I'm actually putting ounces in. And like I mentioned before, I know this, uh, if I, I usually mix this a quart at a time. So I just divide this bottle up into fourths. Uh, with a measuring, uh, just with a tape measure and a pen, I'll just mark on there. So that's it. That bottle's it. That's for a full quart. Set that aside. Now, when I do this, I want to scrape the sides really well. So anything that's on the sides is going to get hardener too. Let's uh, tack rag off these panels real quick, and then uh, and then we're ready to spray. Okay, we're going to be trying out the new gun here. I had to crank up the air pressure quite a bit for this larger tip to get a decent pattern over on the cardboard. Looks like it's going to spray pretty good though, so let's give it a try.
finished shooting, I double coated the spots that uh, I had body filler on or, or did a lot of heavy work. And once you put one coat down, it starts to flash off. You can actually look and see those areas. Uh, not that they're low or anything, but you'll see the little halo or maybe the little different sheen from the body filler to the old paint. So you can go back and put another coat over that. So it gives you a little bit extra to uh, sand in those areas. Maybe they got some sand scratches or a little low spot. So that usually works out pretty well. But I got a good solid coat on everything. Uh, double coated all those other areas, like I just said. So they're, really, they're ready to go. Now that uh, 1.7 tip on that new gun, I'm not happy with it. It's, uh, it, it, too much, it took too much air to atomize. Uh, there's a lot of paint on the ground. There was too much overspray. So I'll be using a 1.4 for now, from now on. We'll be trying that, testing that gun out with some poly prime again, but with the 1.4 millimeter tip in it, see how it works. But this is all ready to go. We're gonna do some sanding on it next and get it ready for color. So thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already and mash that bell icon so you get notifications whenever I release a new video.